Well, good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to this meeting of CSAR. I'm delighted to welcome Eek Lee. As our CSAR members will know, <clears throat> we have an annual competition for uh, graduate students uh, who can demonstrate that their research is not only good research, but is applicable and has significant applications in industry and to society. So out of between 150 and 200 applicants, 10 are selected who get a prize of a thousand pounds and then are invited to address us uh, by talking just before our main lecture. Um, Eek Lee, um, who we're hearing from this evening, has been doing work on cochlear implants. These are some that you will know are the rather high tech things that go inside the ear <clears throat> to help profoundly deaf people um, hear what's going on. Uh, and it, of as with all these high-tech things, you need to be have some very accurate measurement in order to make these implants the right size. But rather than me talk about it, E, why don't you tell us what you've been up to? Oh, can, can you see the screen? Yep, that's yes, good. Um, so, um, good evening, everyone. I'm Yik Mene. I'm a uh, fellow year PhD student from the Department of Engineering. So I'm very happy today to present my latest research about using embedded 3D printing and artificial neural network modeling to reproduce the clinical readout of cocaine implants user. So um, let me start with some background information about cochlea. Cochlea is an organ that converts the mechanical vibrations of sound into electrical signal by using the movement of hair cells inside the cochlea. Cochlea is a total topic organized, so different frequencies of sound are processed at different locations along the cochlea. If these hair cells are damaged, that person may lose its ability to hear. So cochlear implants are devices that can restore hearing in patients with profound hearing loss by using an external current to stimulate the auditory nerve directly. The cochlear implants utilize an electrical array that is surgically implanted in a patient's cochlea to stimulate specific region of the auditory nerve according to the sound frequency. So this working mechanism try to we make the total topic organizations of cochlea. However, there is a problem. Sound, so in particular music, because music is usually composed of a broad range of frequency, music received by cochlear implant user could be very different. And this sound track here simulates what cochlear implant user may hear. And this is the original music. We can hear that the original music is very different from what a cocaine implant user might hear. So the, this severe sound problem is because of the conductive nature of cochlea. Cochlea is filled with a conductive fluid called purinum. And this conductive or purinum cause the um, electrical stimul stimulus to spread within cochlea, therefore an off-target excitation of the auditory nerve. The current spread problems can be seen by a patient's electric field imaging profile. So this is a clinical readout that is measured by the electrical area of a cochlear implant inside a patient's cochlea. And this electric field imaging profile shows the voltage distributions along the natural area inside a patient's cochlea. The voltage distribution depends on cochlear anatomy's cochlear resistivity as well as the natural positions in cochlea. The current testing model are deficient in studying the intracochlear voltage distributions. Um, for instance, animals have a very different cochlear shape compared to human cochlea, so they cannot mimic the human electroanatomical anatomical cochlear features. 
and finite elements model because it is a virtual model so it cannot mimic the geom geometry guided positions of electrodes and Cardava models might have potential ethical availability and cost issue because of this this study uh, provide a new modeling approach combining 3D printing and neural network to model the relationship between the electrode anatomical features and EFI profile. So we fabricated our 3D printed model using an in-house built robotic bioprinter. This is a printer I built in my first year of my PhD. So this is just a demonstration showing you that different materials and shape can be printed using my printer. We fabricated our 3D printed cochlear model using three steps. In the first step, we print a sacrificial interconnected microchannel network using a recessive matrix um, in, or inside a resistive matrix using Provonic F127. Provonic F127 is a sacrificial material. So this is for tuning the resistivity of the matrix so that it can match the resistivity of human cochlear bone. In the second step, a sacrificial cochlear shape spiral is embedded printed inside this interconnected microchannel network. After printing, we cross link the matrix so that the matrix is solidified and we replace the sacrificial materials with saline so that the matrix can become conductive. From the CT scan of our 3D printed cochlear model, you can see there is an interconnected microchannel network. Inside this interconnected microchannel network, there is a cochlear shaped lumen embedded inside it. And the positions of the electrode array of the cochlear implant can also be visualized inside this lumen by inserting a cochlear implant inside it. Our 3D printed cochlear model have a very similar electrical impedance properties compared to cardiophoric cochlea. So this is in contrast to uh, models made with hydrogel, which have poor resistivity tunability and not long lasting. By varying the density of the microchannel network inside the matrix, we are able to capture the large resistivity variations in live human scout. And because the 3D printed model has similar electrical impedance properties and geometrical properties of human cochlea, we are able to reproduce patients' EFR electric field imaging profile. So this is a, a profile obtained from a patient, and this is an EFR profile obtained from our 3D printed model. You can see that they are highly similar. Using our 3D printing method, we produce more than 80 samples with different electrode anatomical features. Uh, for examples, we use different basal lumen diameter, taper ratio, cochlear width, and cochlear height and matrix resistivity to um, recapsulate the large variations in human cochlea. We measure their corresponding EFI profile using a cochlear implant. And so we get a data set of EFI profile resulting from different combinations of these five electrode anatomical features. Uh, afterwards, we develop a neural network model to model the relationship between the five electrode anatomical features and the EFI profile. So our approach is validated with clinical data. The neural network model is able to predict patient specific um, clinical EFI profile based on the patient's cochlear geometric features measured from their CT scan. The accuracy of our approach is very high with less than 10% mean absolute percentage error. We also demonstrated several applications of our approach. First, we are able to fabricate patient-specific cochlear model that give um, similar patients EFI using the model features inferred by our dual record model. Our approach can also be used to investigate how different uh, cochlea features affect how fast the voltage decay within the cochlea. So we find that cochlea with larger basal lumen diameter, larger taper ratio, smaller cochlea height, and smaller cochlea resistivity will, um, will have a slower voltage decay. So cochlea with these features might have a higher susceptibility to the current spread problems. 
And um, in addition, our approach provide a unique capability of uh, predicting or estimating the patient's specific cochlear resistivity. So these information will be very useful because um, the resistivity of cochlear bone is very difficult to be measured using traditional method uh, in live human. So this information hopefully could provide a unique, um, um, a very valuable reference for cochlear bioelectronics research. And in conclusion, our 3D printing, our 3D printing neural network co-modeling approach provides an economics, ethical, and physical manual method that capture the natural anatomical variations of human cochlear. It's able to replicate the patient's um, the distinctive patient's EFI and is able to predict the clinical EFI of patients using the uh, patient's cochlear geometric features measured from the CT scan. So, um, lastly, I would like to thank my collaborator and my supervisor as well as all the members in my group. And thank you so much for listening. I look forward to your question. So, Eek, that was... Uh... Very nice, thank you. And a, a lovely example of the application of research for okay. some uh, very serious social benefit. Um, I don't see many questions, although maybe John Cook, do you have a question? Um, um, yes, I have a, a question. That was very interesting. I, I know from experience of friends how important, uh, how life-changing a cochlear implant uh, can mm -hmm. be. Um, I was going to ask if you were doing patient-specific shapes for the printing, but you answered that um, towards the end. So how, I'd say instead, how close are, is this to clinical acceptance and how long does the process take to build the artificial um, cochlea and, and to test it out and to optimise the electrodes? Uh, so if for in this project we didn't um, involve in the uh, in improving a cochlear implant. So this project is mainly about building a, a new modeling platform for testing for testing cochlear implant. So for for each patient specific uh, cochlear model, it takes uh, probably two hours to make it. Okay, that's much quicker than I expected. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, 3D printing has, has really raced ahead, hasn't it? Yeah, Lee, I don't see any more questions uh, at the moment. So thank you for a, a, a very clear and detailed presentation. Yeah, uh, that so was much. absolutely smashing. Yeah, thank you.